Welcome to PA Timber Goose, another steamy Saturday afternoon. Currently I'm at Warwick County Furnace. I never knew this area was here. This area is actually a nature preserve. Thomas B. Bentley Nature Preserve. French and Pickering Creeks Conservation Trust. Here's our historical placard. Warwick Furnace built here in 1937 by Mrs. Samuel Nutt. It was a third blast furnace in Chester County. The first Franklin County stove was cast here and also cannon and cannonballs for the Revolutionary Army. A lot of times we just ride around on Saturday afternoon and see what we can find. And uh, we'll check out some areas and then come back to it if we want to make a video. This is the second time we were here. There's a lot of cool stuff here. There's some uh, historical restoration going on in here. There's one building there. That one's already been restored. Got some cool worm fence here. You don't see too many worm fences anymore. There's some over in Hopewell Village, which is, which is not too far away. There's a furnace at the bottom. Let's uh, go take a look at the placard over here. We'll read this side first and then we'll work our way across. Warwick Furnace History, Thomas B. Bentley Nature Preserve. Anna Rutt Savage Nut built Warwick Furnace in 1737. It was a blast furnace where iron ore was smelted to make pig iron and sheet iron. She and her family ran the furnace until John Potts became forge master in 1741. The furnace continued in Nut Savage Potts families, becoming the largest producer of pig iron in the area. Furnace was sited at this location because of the dependable water flow of the south branch of the French Creek and its proximity to large ore deposits or the Nutt family owned near Warwick Village. The iron ore was rich at the iron ore rich area was home to a number of furnaces including Reading, later Hopewell, Joanna Furnace, and many furnaces as well as many other four furnaces. As an early major industry in the wilderness many miles from Philadelphia, Warwick Furnace attracted the attention of Ben Franklin who gave the design for his Pennsylvania fireplace known as a Franklin stew to be made at Warwick Furnace. This iron fireplace invented for more efficient heating of houses was produced at the furnace from 1742 to 1765. George Washington, who knew the importance of furnaces camped at Valley Forge during the American Revolution to protect the furnaces and forges in the important iron-rich area, he and Alexander Hamilton brought approximately 8,000 troops to Warwick Furnace. On September 17, 1777, to repair rifles, obtain ammunition and cannonballs, two of the Warwick cannons were display at the memorial site of Paoli Massacre in Malvern, PA. Warwick's furnace last blast was in 1867, ending the very long and productive uninterrupted iron making process that had made an important contribution to the growth of our country. The remaining land and buildings were purchased in 1927, made in a county estate for hunting and a model farm with prize winning crops and cattle. Here's a map of the area. We're up here. And there is a trail. There are trails here you can walk. There's a yellow trail. Uh, we saw this coming in. When it's cooler, we'll come back and walk some of these trails. Thomas B. Bentley Nature Preserve. If you try to scan the QR code, this does not work. There's no cell service standing here. Revolutionary War era cannons. I wonder how many... I wonder how many horses and mules it took to drag one of them. And behind us is Anna's oak tree, believed to be 180 to 250 years old. That's a picture of it in 2018. Turn around here, take a look at the giant oaks. I wasn't sure what these were the first time we were here. But uh, they're huge. The bottom's probably about four foot in diameter. Go straight up. They could tell a lot of history. I hear some thunder in the distance. Very beautiful in here. A lot of historic houses on this road. We uh, 
came down 23 last time we were here a few Sundays ago and we made a right uh, down at Warwick County Park and we just kind of zigzagged back and forth and uh, this I never knew this was down here a lot of this area is being uh, being restored got a nice worm fence here it's very quiet back here that building there looks like it was just recently restored last time we were here there was a sign here saying that there was an ongoing restoration project so you can still see the ramp where it was going into the furnace take a stroll down here I hear some uh, I hear some thunder in the distance I don't know if we're gonna get a thunderstorm today or not the furnace was restored and it looks pretty cool I don't I don't think we can walk inside of that it's fenced off here's a cool pipe here I'm guessing this is pumping the air into the furnace there's another one coming out of the ground Lots of cool things in here. There's some more bricks laying there. Lots of slag piles all around in here. Cornwall furnace, the average temperature inside was 180 degrees. I couldn't imagine working in that kind of heat. It must have been very tiring at the end of the day. I guess you would get used to working in that kind of heat. Very peaceful in here. You always wonder about the manpower one of these furnaces where they came from talk about that here in a minute where did a lot of the labor come from for the furnaces um, usually they were either slaves or indentured servants Cornwall furnace was powered by booth um, what is an indentured servant an indentured servant is usually a poor person you either German or English and you sign a four or an eight-year contract with a ship's captain and uh, they'll bring you across the ocean and drop you off and uh, once you're dropped off, based upon your skill level, you'll be auctioned off to somebody that gives you a job, which in turn pays the ship, which in turn pays the ship captain back for bringing you over here. After four to eight years, you're free to do whatever you want. And uh, my great grandmother's sister was an indentured servant. Uh, she came over here and worked for four years. And the man that she worked with, she ended up marrying. Their last name was Wolf with an E on the end, so I'm not sure what nationality they were. Most of the indentured servants that came over were usually English or German. Um, so that's what an indentured servant is. A lot of the furnaces, they always burn 30 days at a time. After 30 days of burning, they would consume 50 to 60 acres of wood to keep them running. So I imagine there was lots of uh, charcoal making going on, and that definitely took a toll on the all the resources in Pennsylvania. That's a lot of wood to cut down to keep the keep the iron furnaces going. Let's take another look here at the furnace. Still would love to see one of these run. That one's in fairly good shape because it's been restored. I've never seen one with the with the blast furnace pipes in there. All right, thanks for coming along with this short video. Where we're iron furnace i'll put some links down in the description if you want to check this area out as always thanks for watching pa timber ghost like share and subscribe help my channel grow hit that subscribe button give me a thumbs up it really helps a lot if you're new to pa timber ghost welcome to the family and we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching pa timber ghost